Hallo, guten Tag. It's Wes. I am with, I am from, I am Midgard Axe. And if you can't tell by the way that I was talking at the beginning of this video, I am bringing you a German axe and it is the Helko Werk Rhineland Hatchet. Alright guys, so before I start the video, just so you know, sick again, whole family's got it. That's why my voice is all jacked up. It is what it is, nothing I can do about it. So if you notice there's a bunch of cuts in the video, it's because I'm going to have to do small parts. I get a little winded because I'm having to put so much effort into talking, and then my voice just goes and I have to drink water. So uh, there's going to be a, quite a few cuts in here, but you know, if you don't mind cuts, you'll be alright. Let's get into who Helko Werk is in Germany. I'll give you guys a little bit of background about them, how they started, and what their process is in making axes, okay? All right, guys, so getting into Helko Werk and where they came from and what they're about. And just so you guys know, my uh, German accent and my German pronunciation sucks. I do have family that lives in Germany. My cousin's in a, actually a, in a very popular like rock death metal band over there, so what's up uh, if he's watching? Um, the story of Helko Werk started in Wirpeltal, Germany, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, and that was in a village uh, of Cronenberg. Um, and it was there, it started out in 1844, and um, it was founded by a gentleman by the name of August Helsper. Helsper. Cool thing about it was they put it next to a creek, and the creek ran the factory's water wheel, providing power um, for the forge hammers and the grinding wheels, which was actually pretty cool. The factory remained at this location for 60 years, and um, you know as it became more established and they grew, um, they grew into like forestry and farming tools, and they did they even did coffee and uh, banana plantations too, which was kind of cool. In 1909, they relocated the factory uh, about three miles or three kilometers down the road, and uh, that's where it sits today, next to a local railway station, um, allowing them to get shipments of steel. Uh, really easily right there. Um, the factory um, did a lot of axes in Europe in the early 20th century and then by the 1930s or so um, they started shipping axes to countries in all over the place. Africa, Asia, South America, all kinds of different places. It was around this time that the Helsper family um, actually merged with another family and I believe the name of it is Kothaus. Kothaus family, which is where you guys get the Helco. The Helspers and the Kothaus, they just join the few first letters of each name and put them together to, to form the Helco. And, uh, you know, it's pretty widely known. Helco Vedrick is a pretty widely known um, axe today, and it's pretty widely known across the, the world as well. Now, I will say on their website, they take a lot of pride in what they do, showing you what they do. The um, marketing aspect of Helco Werk is really good on their website. They go over a lot of in here on how the heads are made, that they're individually forged by hand using a drop hammer on open dies. Um, you know, it just goes on and on and on about the different things they do, the Rockwell hardness of each axe, um, how they forge everything online, which I'll run some pictures in now. Um, and it's basically everything it says is hardened within 53 to 56 Rockwell hardness, uh, 30 millimeters from the cutting edge, okay? The handles are pretty cool. From what I uh, read on their website, their handles are made in-house, okay? And they use, um, they say, grade A hickory. And it's a pretty cool process um, that they have a sawmill that cuts the planks. And then they, it says it's uh, softly air dried for nine to ten months, depending on the weather in Northern Europe that season. Um, and they just go in to say that the hickory that they source from are uh, trees anywhere between 60 to 120 feet high, um, which they say that in in you know if you guys don't know, hickory has different properties depending on how tall the tree is. And um, they're saying in that they're saying on their website that in between that has very good strong bendable properties, which makes a good um, uh, axe handle. Um, and then they say they do uh, add boiled linseed oil to their handles to kind of um, you know treat the handle before it comes to you. And uh, something I found really cool too is that they sand their handles at 150 grit and they leave it at 150 grit. And to be honest with you guys, I do like that grit. Um, sometimes I'll do 220 for felling axes and stuff, but 150 grit is really good because it's smooth enough. 
Um, well, I should say 150 grit is really good for throwing axes because it's smooth enough to come out of your hand, but it still gives you a little grip to where it's not uncontrollable when you release the axe. And then, of course, they go over their leather sheaves talking about how um, they're made from vegetable tan, full grain cowhide leather. Um, they... Uh, they install a heavy-duty welt in all their sheaths, which has added a strip of leather that rests against the blade for maximum blade protection. And what they're talking about, guys, is, is that this extra seat of leather right in this area right here. You got two on the outside, then that one in the center there, which is actually kind of nice for a sheath to have that center section. It gives a little bit more protection, a little bit more, um, you know, uh, durability for your bit inside there. The buckles that they have on their sheaves are also uh, nickel plated, which is kind of cool too. As you can see here, it's a nickel plated um, uh, buckle. And the rivets are really nicely done as well. All right guys, so what you get when you buy this, of course you get this sheath, which is a really nice sheath. It's a belt style sheath that you can tighten because it does stretch. Leather will stretch over time so you can adjust it as your leather stretches. You get the uh, hatchet, of course. You also get a nice book in here that gives you some information on Helco Vurk and the different lines of axes they have. Um, and then of course it gives you some important information uh, on how to care for your axe here. And then just kind of goes over in detail like the parts of the axe, maintenance and safety, rust prevention, uh, the hickory handles they use. They give you a frontier collection of all the bags that they offer. Just kind of like a small little catalog it's actually pretty informative and it gives you a little breakdown of all their axes. I will tell you guys this, I'm not going to go over all of them, but they have different subsections of their axes, okay? If you go onto their website, they have, I can't remember all of them, they have like the Vario line, the traditional line, the classic line, and they have a bunch of different axes in different categories where they go through and they design the heads differently and it's a really cool uh you know, uh, look, if you want to go check it out on their website to see all the axes that they uh, offer, it's a pretty cool, um, uh, you know, they give you a big choice of axes to look at and to kind of decide on. So if you get a chance, go over there and check out their subcategories. Like I said, there's like um, the Vario line, the traditional, and the classic, I believe, is the three. Um, but they offer more than that, too, so go check it out if you got time. You also get some head oil for your uh, axe or your hatchet and they also give you a cool sticker too so you can put it on your forehead or put it on your grandma's bumper. Alright guys, so just giving you some specs off their website about the Rhineland hatchet, okay? They're saying that the head comes in at one and a quarter pounds, okay? They're saying that the whole thing comes in at one and three quarter pounds. They also say on there that your bit length, okay, is four inches and online it also says that they hand sharpen every single one of their bits. The total length of this hatchet is coming in at 14 inches. Now like I said before guys on their website it says that all of these heads right here are hand forged using a drop hammer on open dies okay. The Rockwell hardness is between 53 and 56 okay and also they also say on here too that they use premium grade C50 high carbon steel for all their axe heads. And online, guys, it says that they're, all their axe handles are grade A American hickory, okay? And it also says, too, that they're individually selected for grain orientation and density, how heavy or how light the handle feels to them. You can smell the boiled linseed oil on the handle, guys. I don't know about you, but I love the smell of boiled linseed oil. And it's also, you can tell that it was sanded at 150 grit. It gives it a little bit of roughness, but smoothness enough to throw, in my opinion. It's a good grit to stay around for a throwing axe. And they do say that they use a hardwood wedge with a steel barrel wedge in at the top, which is present here. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the pictures that I put in there and a the little bit of information I gave you about the company, which is kind of cool. I like looking up companies and, you know, where they came from. This one's been around for a while, 1844, it sounds like, and then they merged over to what we know now as Helco Vurk. It's kind of cool going over that information, guys. I enjoy that. I'm a history buff. Um, I like learning about companies and where they came from, how they started out to how they are now. Their, their you know, kind of transformation is from here to there. Um, it's just really interesting to know um, what you're buying and who you're buying stuff from so it's really nice but you're probably asking Wes what's going on with this thing what's really truly going on with this hatchet let's get into it
Let's, let's go over measurements first because I always like going over measurements. Online they said that this thing was uh, coming in at 14 inches. Let's check it out. I got about 14 and a quarter. We do have a little excess handle there. I'm not going to complain about an excess handle at all. Um, I'd rather it be a little too long than too short. I can always take some off. Bit length. Let's go over the bit length here. They said four inches and I've got a little over four inches. It's like four and one eighth is what I got. So four and one eighth length of a bit there, which is kind of cool. I'd rather have a bigger bit. So cool. All right, guys. So online, they're saying this thing is weighing in at one pound and 12 ounces. Okay. So let's give it away on the scale here and see what I get. Okay, I'm getting one pound and 15 ounces, so we're closer to the two pound mark for the whole entire hatchet. But to be honest with you guys, I'd rather have more weight anyway. So um, we are coming in about three ounces heavier, but uh, I'm not complaining about that. And I can almost bet that it's a lot of it's in this handle because guys, I don't know if you can tell or not, this handle's pretty thick, okay? It's not super thick. Um, I do like it to be a little bit thinner. I can deal with it though, um, but I'm starting to find now that a lot of the German manufacturers are starting to give people um, really thick um, handles for whatever reason. Um, you know, people will debate that. Um, to, in my personal opinion and in my experience, um, having a thicker handle sometimes doesn't really mean anything. So uh, I'd rather have the handle a little thinner, but that's okay. I can deal with this. It's not super thick. Um, but yeah, this handle right here is, it does have a little grain run out. Um, we do have 45 degree uh, grain orientation down there on that knob, but I can deal with that. You guys already know how I feel about grain orientation and grain run out and all that. I'm not going to go over that again. If you want it, if you care, go back and watch some of my other videos on my uh, experience and my opinion on um, axe handles. And um, it just, it, you know, it does feel good. That 150 grit down there does feel good. It gives you enough grip to hold, um, but it also feels like it'd be smooth enough to release out of your hand. Um, this is something that I might start trying is 150 grit. I actually kind of like that feel. You can tell they put a hardwood wedge here up at the top and they did use a steel barrel wedge, okay? I do like the head design. It's very nice, swoops up here, swoops down. You know, it looks like a classic German axe head, which I do like those, um, that flare that comes out at the top and bottom. Excuse me, guys, sorry. And, um, you know, it just, it looks like a pretty good, pretty good hatchet. I will say it feels really good in the hand, okay? There is no flared knob down here at the bottom, which is great. I don't have to worry about a flared knob if I was going to use this to throw. Putting it in my hand, um, it does feel really good. It almost wants to walk forward. You can te definitely feel that all the weight, okay? Yeah, I mean, all the weight is basically from here forward, okay? I mean, it does have a nice size pole right here and then up in here in the eye, but you can definitely feel the heft is in the front of this thing, which I think is going to make for a really good throwing axe. I, I, you know, I've... Don't know just yet, but sometimes I have a, an inkling on these things. I can usually pick things up and tell just by doing this and kind of feeling it how well they're going to fly. And I got a feeling that this one's probably going to fly very well, especially with that head heavy weight. Um, it's going to actually want to like flip over for me really fast. Um, I don't know, but I think it's going to fly really well. We'll see. I will tell you guys, I do have a little bit of experience with Helco Vertex stuff in the past. I have used a bunch of their axes before, and I will give you my honest opinion and tell you this. It's hit or miss. I love their backstory. I love their company image. It looks great, and I love a good story. But I will say that over the past few years, their QC hasn't been the best. Now, I'm sure you've probably run across Helco Vertex on Amazon. Every time you go on Amazon and look up any axe, somehow, some way, a Helco Werk ad or axe is going to come up as you may also like or in just a little box as you're scrolling up and down looking at whatever axe you put into the search bar. And that's great. They're like one of the top of the line axes on Amazon and it's pushed to you very hardcore on Amazon. As you guys know, in a previous video, um, I said that I was going to do a small review on the uh, log splitter that I got, the Vario log splitter. Well, I'll tell you guys this, it broke. Um, after about six logs, the handle snapped in half, okay? I didn't overstrike. The bit went into the log, bounced off, which is pretty normal when you're, you know, when you're doing logs. 
I did it a second time. This time it stuck in the middle of the log and the handle just snapped in half, okay? I didn't have any of these screws come loose, but to be honest with you guys, I can't really give you an honest opinion because I got about six logs split and then it snapped in half. Is this their fault? No. I will tell you this. Looking at this handle, I got vertical grain down here at the knob and very little run out and it split. So, uh, is that their fault? No, guys, I tell you all the time, I'm not going to judge an axe company by handles breaking, okay? Because nobody knows exactly what a handle is going to do. However, I have had some issues with a lot of German axes using hickory handles and them breaking. I say that to say that Helco Werk seems to be hit or miss. Some people rave about them. Some people have issues with them. I've had good and I've had things with issues. This one right here, I can tell you right now, I have already had issues. Number one, it's not a humongous deal at all, but the bit is not very sharp at all, guys. I can run my finger. If I, if I did this on one of my axes, I'd cut my finger right now. And I'm not, okay? It's not sharp at all. Is it as dull as a spoon? Um, no, but it's close. It's close. For this to be hand filed, and I've got edge roll over on this side, you can feel the wire. Listen to this. Hear that? So I can feel the wire on this side. The edge wasn't done very well. To be honest with you, for this hatchet to be almost $200, I think it was like $160 or $170, I would have liked that edge to have been a lot better than this. I know I'm hitting this thing pretty hard with the bit, guys. But, you know, to claim that you're, you hand sharpen these, um, I would expect this to be a little bit sharper. But it's okay. It's not a huge deal. I can get it sharp. They, it, it does have a very nice profile on it. A very nice sticking, cutting profile on it, okay? Kind of like a, almost more like a universal edge. Um, but the, the bit is nice. It's just not very sharp, okay? For 170 bucks, I would expect a little more than that. But, you know, it is what it is. Handle. Um, it feels good in the hand, like I said before. Uh, you know, we have 45 degree, but hatchet handles, guys, are a little different when it comes to grain orientation. It's not as important as it is for longer uh, axe handles, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, not bad, not bad. It does feel good in the hand. They do have their logo here, which is nice. Um, up at the top, it is sporting a really thick uh, wooden wedge with a steel barrel wedge in it. It is sat like a normal German axe usually is, which is basically almost even with the type of, top of the axe eye. Um, I will show you guys this. This is kind of a little bit frustrating to me. Okay, um, let me show you how this is the head. The head is crooked on the handle, but it's not the forging. It's the way that it was hafted on the handle. I can tell that it's not the forging. So if I hold the handle straight, you can probably see that the axe bit is like this. Okay, this is straight. Now I'm going to straighten up the head. Now watch what happens to the handle when I straighten up the head. Look where the handle's sitting. The head is straight right here. And look at the handle. Let me back it up a little bit. Look at the handle. That's straight. Now, if I straighten up the handle, it's like this. So basically, if you guys can see this or not, look at that. Sitting like this, okay? Totally see it. I can see on the actual handle itself that this eye right here is farther down on the handle than it is right here, but it's not the forging because you can look at it and see that it's straight. So guys, look at that handle. I'm looking at it straight right now. The forging straight, the handle's like this. It's, it's coming down at an angle, okay? That sucks. That sucks. It's not hafted on here correctly. There's another thing that I noticed too after I noticed that the head was hafted on crooked. Um, we've got space, and I'll roll a video in now of what I saw immediately when I took it out. We've got space all up underneath this, uh, on the underside of the axe eye, okay? There's a ton of space under there. And that's going to, it, it does, it's not fitted properly. So, in other words, what I'm saying is, is that uh, the head, in my experience, these heads are really, are pretty decent. The tempering usually holds very well. Um, but in my experience, it, it, it's hit or miss with them. Sometimes you'll get something really good. And then sometimes you'll get something like this, where to be honest with you guys, I'm going to have to take this head off this handle and fix it. 
It's not going to be able to be left on like this. Number one, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to even use this handle because this handle doesn't even fit this axe eye, okay? And when looking at it here, I mean, I'd have to go probably all the way down to here to get this to fit. And you're talking a 13-inch handle at that point. 13 and a quarter. Um... So, to be honest with you, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to even use this axe handle. I don't want to leave the head on there crooked like that. And I can tell you right now, with all that space in there, it's going to come loose eventually. And what's going to happen is it's either going to twist left or twist right. And because it's already seating down like this, I have a feeling that it's going to twist this way eventually. It's going to start working its way twisting that way because of all the room under there. It really sucks. Could I throw some wood in there? and smash some wood into those gaps um, to keep it from twisting? Yeah, I could. But is that going to be a, very, a proper seat? No. It's a temporary fix that's eventually going to give way, and I might as well go ahead and fix it correctly. My personal experience on these axes are is that once you get them sharp, they do stay sh sharp very well. I'm not trying to ha hate on Helco Vark at all. I'm really not. But to be honest with you guys, the QC on this, that should have been found. I mean, you can clearly see, I mean, look at that. Look how crooked that handle is to get the head straight. And then when the head, when the handle's straight, I mean, you can clearly see that how this side of the head is way far down compared to this side. And it's sitting like this. It was just hafted improperly. It really was. And it wouldn't have taken much to see that. Um, it just really sucks that, uh, you know, you spend $160, $170, $180 and your axe comes like this. So I feel you guys. Like I said, I went through some of those reviews on the other axe we did, and people were saying that it sucks. It does. It sucks when you get axes like this. You pay this kind of money on it. However, I know that usually the steel quality on these heads is really good, so I can try to fit this handle, but what I'm probably going to end up having to do is um, probably end up having to fit this thing either on this handle, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not, or I'm going to have to source another handle to put this head on shouldn't get an axe handle that sits like this on a head. You shouldn't. And uh, I agree with you on that. So what I'm going to do is, is uh, before I can get outside and throw it, guys, I'm going to have to go source a handle for this and fit this thing correctly and uh, get it to where I can throw it and it's not going to come loose. There's no point in putting any work into this hatchet with it sitting like this. It's just a problem waiting to happen. If you know the problems there, you might as well go ahead and start fixing it now before you get into anything on this uh, hatchet. And that's just my personal opinion. So guys, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put this one to the side for now and um, till I can get to it and uh, source a handle for it. Sorry, we're not going to be able to throw that one yet. I am going to make a part two of me throwing it and fixing it and then make a, a no axe to grind on it. But unfortunately, guys, that needs to be fixed prior to me throwing it. It's just there's no point in throwing it right now. Sorry to bring you that news. Um, you know, all these axes that I ordered, I don't look at them until I get on camera with you guys. I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at. So I had no idea going into this it was going to be like that. But I'm not going to blow smoke up your asses and say that this thing is great and throw it and, oh yeah, this is thing. No, it's, it's just, it's not, in my opinion, it's not feasible to use right now. As you guys know, I hate, I hate that. I hate these types of things that happen, but I, I tell you, it's going to happen a lot with axes, and this is some of the stuff that I, this is one of the reasons why I made a YouTube channel, because I want to start telling people out there, getting some, you know, I'd like, I, I said at the beginning that I was probably wasn't going to get a big following, and that's okay, but it would be kind of cool to get a big following, to be honest with you, so we can stop mess like this, because some people, um, you know, not saying I'm better than anybody else, but some people don't know how to fix this stuff and they'll use it like this or they'll try to get their money back and they'll have to go through a bunch of crap to get their money back. And it just, it just sucks. It really does. But luckily I know how to fix it and I'll just have to throw another handle at it and uh, see if we can get it uh, working and, and throwing. That wraps up this one for now, guys. We're going to stick this one to the side. Next video, I'll introduce the next axe until we can get this one fixed. But thanks for watching. I appreciate your support. But until next time, tschüss. That's German's way of saying see you or bye. See you.